Uh, so, today I'm going to try to do a very, very brief overview of what Raytheon is, why it is significant, and the sort of... What I'm really looking to go over are the things that have made it so significant, that have brought it to this level of industrial behemoth, uh, and behemoth within the defence industry. So, Raytheon, as you will have guessed, and in accordance with what this channel tends to do, it's a defence firm based in the US, so I'm just going to give a bit of an overview. So, as we know, even if you are not familiar with the defence industry, you know Raytheon is a giant. Uh, it's enormous, and it's massively famous even in the non-defence world. So, primarily, beyond Raytheon itself, it has a number of businesses, per se, subsidiaries, uh, that it runs that create significant technology. So there's Collins Aerospace, which is uh, in the UK, I believe, and that sort of makes various systems pertaining to military technology, avionics, optronics, that sort of stuff, specific uh, technology. Pratt & Whitney, which is obviously incredibly famous, world famous for producing propulsion systems. They have a lot of notable engines, particularly on jets in the last 50-odd years. Uh, and then there's Raytheon Intelligence and Intelligence and Space, and then Raytheon Missiles and Defense, and those two are fairly self-explanatory. Intelligence and Space, that's the cyber and space side, and then Missiles and Defense is exactly what it says on the tin. So that's the sort of... Those are the subsidiaries of Raytheon, which is absolutely enormous. And Raytheon itself, and I'm just going to include all of the its constituent parts in this, it operates pretty much entirely in aviation, space, and just the defence market in general. But they are not purely a military defence firm, although in regard to what they make and what they specialise in, they sort of specialise in... This might be a bit of a long list, let me think. Cyber and software solutions, digital systems, mechanical systems, uh, program management, scientific research, radars, software development, space technology, certain training technologies, precision weapons systems, aerostructure, avionics, missile and defense, Aircraft engines, as we've seen with Pratt & Whitney, auxiliary power units, advanced sensors, they do a lot. Uh, and they specialise in a lot, and that's how they've largely become so successful. But in regard to where they have come from, Raytheon hasn't always been the bastion of industry that it is today, that we know it as today. It started out as the American Appliance Company, which sounds rather, you know, sort of quaint and sort of family-run business that you might find on a corner shop. Uh, but it developed several pioneering technologies, sort of with the opportunity, perhaps that's the wrong word, but uh, given the development that it saw during World War II. So its technologies were employed in World War II. They created sort of advanced radars and helped to advance the idea of radar for British and American forces, as well as sort of producing for these radars. If you know radar, they required at that time uh, magnetron tubes, which, if you know how the microwave was invented, that was basically a guy, an engineer, standing near a magnetron tube, which was spewing out microwave radiation, which then melted the chocolate bar in his pocket. Anyway, they have advanced radars massively, or certainly did back then, and that gave them a name, but they also invented the microwave and then went on to sell microwave cooking appliances and easy-to-use radios, sort of democratised it so that they could be plugged in in any household. But beyond that, to go into the more defensive side of things, they also uh, developed some of the first guided missiles and were involved in the US space program. So, fairly quickly, with the sort of explosion in business uh, and 
explosion in development opportunity that was World War II, they've become well known for a good reason. And they've been used for by various countries ever since. They have a lot of different stations in different countries, including the UK, but largely the US. So, to get to the modern day, they still make absolutely incredible products. And I'm just going to give a bit of a taste of this. So, every single thing I'm about to read out are just, you know, a few notable uh, missiles that they created in a singular one of their subsidiaries. So this isn't even across the firm as a whole, this is across Missiles and Defence, the subsidiary. Uh, and these are some of the things they have created. So, AGM-65 Maverick, the Advanced Cruise Missile, the Joint Standoff Weapon, the AIM-7 Sparrow, the AIM-9 Sidewinder, uh, the AMRAAM, the TOW Missile, Tomahawk, Javelin, Stinger, Paveway 3, the Hawk series, the Patriot series, uh, RIM-7 Sea Sparrow, uh, RIM-ESSM, they have created a lot, and that isn't really where it stops. So, to continue, um, the Peregrine Air-to-Air Missile, Stormbreaker, the smart weapon that we looked at in another video, the Lynx Infantry Fighting System, uh, Sentinel Radar, Excalibur Projectile, Ghost Eye, the Iron Dome System, uh, various kill vehicles, Ghost IMR, um, what else? The Zumwalt Class Destroyer, Sea Ram, Phalanx, uh, the Mark 54 Torpedo, the Lightweight Torpedo. These guys are legends in their industry, and for good reason. Everything I have just read out is in a singular subsidiary for missiles and defense. Uh, Aegis as well, A-E-G-I-S, which is, you know, creates loads of technologies of its own. So I think that's rather important just to address the scope of what they do and the amount of notable technology they've been able to create due to just being incredibly good at developing and maintaining relationships with the government via via sort of providing massive value. In regard to the other stuff, perhaps the older stuff, anything with the name Beach, Hawker, or King in the name, the aircraft was likely, in the past, not nowadays, but in the past it was likely made by them or contributed to by them. Everything they do stretches across many aspects of the industry. Most defence projects, or perhaps not most, but given that they don't have a particular specialisation, as it were, they make weapons systems, they make technological systems that are implemented across lots of platforms, what they make isn't certainly specific. So if you were to look at, uh, let's take Rolls-Royce Holdings, they you know make certain aircraft engines, but you can't necessarily... Uh, apply an aircraft engine uh, to, I don't know, any sort of tank per se. That's a really bad example, but you can't apply it to another weapon system. So an individual weapon system like the SA-80, you can't uh, apply their technology to larger infrastructure. You can't apply it to commercialised technology as much. Uh, perhaps that is a pretty bad example, but my point really with it is that a lot of their products can be used multi-platform effectively. They're not confined to a singular platform or a particular age because they are uh, utilised on multiple platforms for multiple purposes and so are incredibly effective. And beyond that, they're incredibly well engineered. One doesn't merely engineer something and it sticks around forever. Um, the fact that they have so many series, that being uh, a weapons name that continues. Multiple versions, multiple variants throughout time. What it means is that they have had successful variants uh, that have proven cost-efficient to governments, that have proven to be useful and effective. And that's actually really important. So you can't look at the success of a firm like Raytheon and put it down to really much other than just being incredibly efficient, being able to maintain good relations and being 
overall incredible value for money. Uh, cost effective in that manner in the value they provide. So beyond this, to look at them from a more corporate point of view, uh, and I am aware that I don't want to make this too long, they have 46,000 uh, patients at the moment, 61,000 engineers out of 174,000 employees. This is after a 25% cut in staff from 2019 to 2020, so they were even larger just a couple of years ago. Uh, if one is to look at it as more of a corporate entity, to look at what they did within uh, 2021, the full year of 2021 saw sales of 64.4 billion, which is incredible. They've done a stock repurchasing scheme of which for the full year of 2021, FY 2021, financial year, uh, they repurchased 2.3 billion RTX shares. That's the Raytheon stock. Uh, with an adjusted EPS last year of 4.27. Currently, for the outlook for 2020, the adjusted EPS will is expected to be from 4.6 to 4.8, or $4.60 to $4.80, with free cash flow in uh, the financial year of 2021 uh, being $5 billion. And there's not really much one can do to wrap one's head around the sheer magnitude that Raytheon operates with, creating such significant technologies and being able to maintain a profile merely for those technologies. I mean, of course, they have uh, commercially applicable products, but they are as true to a defence industry, uh, sorry, to a defence firm as a defence firm gets, and they will continue to do that because they are a mainstay of a lot of military forces around the world, including a lot of Western countries, the UK and the US, massively. Um, and their expansion really is synonymous with this idea of the Western military. They were one of the firms that were in competition with some of these um, massive Soviet and Chinese firms, sort of back in the 1980s, 1990s, for notoriety. They were said to be, if you sort of have this comparison of the US uh, and the UK, against Russia and China, saying, look at the defence firms we have, look at the technology we can produce. Raytheon was a major player in that as well, you know, along with a lot of other firms. But the fact that you don't even need to know about defence to know who they are just really proves that they've stood the test of time in a relatively short time since World War II and have climbed the ladder to create some of the most significant products in, de in defence ever created. So I think I'll leave it there because... It's impossible to summarise them, as I've said, uh, 64.4 billion in sales in 2021. You can't put them in a singular video, so we'll have to revisit this. But this is just sort of a brief overview looking at some of their more basic and notable technologies and why they are this household name, even if you're not familiar with defence. So that is the end.